Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hugo Gagioni. I work for Sony Professional Solutions of America. And this presen presentation is about a new compression system that Sony developed uh, actually a few years ago, but that we are using to empower all of our production products to achieve applications that go beyond high definition. Uh, as you probably know very well, uh, the world is transitioning very quickly from high definition to uh, applications that go beyond the capabilities of high definition. For example, high frame rate, uh, uh, 4K, 4 to 2, 10 bits. And there are a number of uh, countries already in the world that are transmitting 4K signals via satellite and terrestrial. And uh, also, the uh, many broadcasters uh, is, is still within the boundaries of HD would like to move from interlace to progressive 1080 60p. Sony uh, has a family of uh, tapeless solutions called XTCAM, and we have been using MPEG compression for quite some time, about 12 to 13 years. We cannot continue using MPEG to achieve or to uh, master this new application, and we had to develop a new compression. This uh, compression system, we call it XAVC. Just to remind you, because we're gonna go a little technical, when we say we are compressing intra-picture compression or intra-frame compression, it means the algorithm, the compression system, is compressing frame by frame, independ independently. There is no communication, no a crosstalk, if I can use that word, between the different frames. It's intra-frame compression. However, when we do intra-frame compression to achieve a, a level of picture quality, we have to spend a lot of megabits per second. Another way to solve that problem is to have inter-picture compression, or inter-frame, also known as long GOP, group of pictures then this is the structure of a GOP. The first frame is an intra-picture, is com compressed independently, and we use the intra-frame to predict, to compress a future frame called the P. It's a predictive picture. Now that I compress the I and the P, I use that information to compress the two frames in the middle, B frames, bidirectionally compressed pictures. Therefore, this structure of multiple frame compression allows me to have very high picture quality at much lower data rate. And the factor that most people talk about is about three to one. In other words, I can achieve picture quality of about 100 megabits intra using about 30 megabits long gop. This is a trade-off between data rates and picture quality. Sony has enormous knowledge in compression systems, and we have deployed different strategies through the years. Uh, XTCAM is a very popular uh, tapeless solution. We have over 400,000 devices around the world, and we use the very popular, very well-adopted MPEG compression, up to 4 to 2 uh, of color coding and 8 bits. And this is what is known as the everyday television format. News gathering, magazine productions, uh, sitcoms, reality television, they're all compressed using MPEG, up to data rates of 50 megabits per second. Uh, some broadcasters use it at 35, some others will use it at 25 megabits. It's mainstream, ma mainstream HDTV production. On the other scale, we have mastering format. This, uh, the HDCAM SR, that was the VTR that we make, it was until recently a contribution master among the studios, the cinematographic studios. It produces a spectacular picture quality up, up to 1920, 1080, uh, up to 60 frames per second. And the data rates are very high. We can go all the way to 880 megabits per second, RGB, 12-bit. This is a mastering format. But none of these codecs have the capability to operate in these new applications that I was telling you about. Then we had to introduce what we call is XABC. Okay? 
one one comment I have to make. Please the, do not take pictures of the of the presentation. I will be able to give you a website where you can download the, if you if you want to. Um, the actual technical terms of X or name of XABC is called H264 or MPEG4 ABC, but we implement this algorithm at the maximum level of performance permissible by the standard. The MPEG standard, the MPEG4, is defined in terms of levels and profiles. And uh, depending on the application, you will execute more or less the tools of compression of the system. Well, we develop the XABC to be able to reach all the way to 4K. Th this is the level 5.2. We are using this compression for high frame rate recording, for mastering recording, for 4K movie making, uh, for 50p, 60p, 1080, and we will also, uh, we are using this algorithm for consumer applications, and I'll show you later more. Then this is a very specialized, very complex chip with very low power consumption because we want to put this device in everything that we make from, uh, from the uh, camcorder perspective. Is it works both in XABC or H.264 as well as MPEG in case the end user wants to have backward compatibility with MPEG. Is it can work in intraframe, it can work in interframe, it's completely flexible. It reaches up to 4K, 4096 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. In HD, it can go actually much beyond 180. We can actually go to 480 frames per second. If you had the opportunity to visit the booth, we have a, an a HD recorder in the back of the booth recording at 480 frames per second. That is done using this chip inside the server. Uh, the color sampling is 4 to 2, and currently we're using 10 bit. We, there's a possibility that we can do RGB or 444 as well. But very important is low power consumption so that we can put, uh, place the chip inside our camcorders and uh, palm camcorders. And also it has a unique technology which we call two-pass encoding, which I will explain. In compression, uh, the process is you analyze the picture you try to identify what portions of the pictures are simple, what portions of the pictures are more complex, and you make a decision how to assign your compressed bits. If it is a clearly visible area that is complex, you probably will give more bits to prevent any artifacts. If the area is flat, you can get away with very few bits. Therefore, this process of analyzing and then executing is called a two-pass encoding. In the past, people had to do it in non-real time, when we had DVDs and Blu-rays. We have been able to do this in much faster than real time. Therefore, even at the 180, 480 frames per second, we do a two-pass analysis of the video. This process allows me to have very, very high picture quality and surviving multiple generations without having to use excessive data rate. Okay, what, all that, what does it all mean in reality? All of our cinematographic cameras have XABC built in. I can record 4K, 30 frames per second, at very modest 300 megabits per second, which means it's a very small file size, which will cost less in storage. Our closest competitor in the industry, they don't have this technology. This will record, they have to record this at 400 megabit per second or even higher, which means their file size and storage costs are higher. This is one of the advantages of XABC. Um, I said that there's another, another trend in the industry is to try to go to 50 progressive and 60 progressive, especially when you produce content that is uh, for distribution in the web. 
uh, interlace is not a very good news for a web distribution. Therefore, uh, a lot of the clips that you find today in Hulu, Netflix, uh, YouTube, are all comp uh, compressed using progressive format. Okay? And the trend is to go to 1080p and 10 bits. Very important to move to 10 bits to avoid having a banding effects or quantization effects. Just to show you, this is a little technical, but this is a signal-to-noise ratio comparison, or in simpler terms, picture quality comparison. The top line is MPEG-2, 8 bits, at uh, 50 megabit per second, and it has a respectable signal-to-noise ratio of about 35 dB. I can equate and many times surpass that picture quality at 35 megabits per second using XABC meaning XABC is much more efficient than MPEG. I can achieve equal or better picture quality at lower data rate. Some people pushing it that they can even achieve very close to the picture quality of 50 megabits at half the data rate, 25 megabits. Then they will achieve enormous co sa uh, cost savings in a storage by having to reduce the data rate by half. This is the universe of all of the permissible data rates that can be achieved with uh, the actual the standard, with level 5.2. Uh, we can go, if, if uh, legally, by the standard, I can go all the way to 960 megabits for 4K, either intra-frame or long gop. And these are the levels also uh, permissible for 2K or HD, as well as proxies. Okay? However, we cannot implement uh, all of the data rates, uh, in, in especially because we have constraints of power consumption in the cameras. Therefore, we have selected a number of data points um, for each one of the different applications. In 4K, I can do intra-frame compression up to 600 megabits per second. If you remember, it 4K, Natively, 4 to 2, 10 bits, 60p, is 12 gigabits per second. I'm compressing from 12 giga down to 600 megabits per second. If I use long up in order to reduce the data rate for memory of time recording in my memory, uh, this is what I have in the consumer cameras, I can go down to 150 megabits per second with quality very close to my 600 megabits. Then this long gop to intra is a factor of about four. If you multiply four times 150, you get 600, okay? In 1080p, which is what mo mo a lot of broadcasters want to start experimented with, I can do long gop at 50 megabits, interframe at 50 megabits, or I can do intraframe at 200 megabits per second, okay? And so on. Then each one, these are all of the memory camcorders and studio decks that we have, uh, we, are current, we have currently in the market. You can see them shown in different parts of the booth. Uh, all of these devices can operate up to 1080 60p in the world of HD, or they can go all the way to 4K in the world of cinematography. Then the cinematographic cameras, the FS7, very popular camcorder, they can do 4K, 60p at very modest uh, data rates com using compressed XAVC. Again, this is how we distribute our pro uh, products relative to the, the application, from consumer applications all the way to HDTV production and 4K. Even the consumer camcorders, uh, are now doing uh, 4K at 120 frames per second. Action cam, it's a very tiny consumer camera, uses this XAVC compression built in. All right, uh, let me show you the f different philosophies, different ways that people around the world think about data rates and how that impact their business decisions for a, a storage costs and picture quality uh, considerations. This vertical axis is the axis that defines uh, 
complexity in spatial resolution and number of frames per second. Then on the bottom we have a HD 60i and on the top I have 4K 60p. And the horizontal axis is data rate, operating points. I have 25 megabit per second, which is very low, all the way to 600 megabits. Our today's MPEG is sitting comfortably over there. This is about 50 megabit per second. This is cost conscious news gathering people, broadcasting people. Well, I can now lower the data rates even further than 50 megabit by using XABC. I can go to 35, 25 megabit long gop in HD with equal and sometimes better picture quality. If I'm doing wireless transmissions from my camcorders to the broadcast station, I use proxies, very low data rate pictures. It's the same format, it's XABC. Now, uh, some countries and some broadcasters want to move to progressive, 60p, 50p. I can do that amazing picture quality at a mere 50 megabit per second using long gop XABC. And uh, if I want to use intraframe because perhaps some editing consideration, I can do it at 100 megabit, 200 megabit, all the way to 4K productions. Uh, as you probably know, in Hollywood, uh, most of the studios, they use raw recording, but the file sizes are big. We can do 4K 24 frames per second at 240 megabits per second. The file size are very, very minimal, very manageable. Okay. All progressive. All right, um, there are three directions or trends around the world. I'm gonna talk about ultra high definition production, conventional broadcasting production, and news and magazine production. Okay. In the area of ultra high definition production, uh, especially driven by uh, Discovery in the US, by some Japanese companies in, in Japan, we are looking at 600 megabits per second, 4K 60p. In the terms, in the area of a broadcast high quality productions for broadcasting, we are looking at 100 megabits, 50 megabit long up. And for news gathering or a news production, you're looking at very low data rates to save a uh, storage cost at around 25 to 50 megabits. All right, let me, uh, these are the advocates, the very important end users that have uh, asked us through the years to do certain things for them. Uh, let me begin with uh, ultra high definition production. In Japan, there is an organization called the Next Generation Television for Broadcasting. They are the organization that uh, have produced all the programs to, uh, right now for satellite delivery and cable delivery of uh, 4K or ultra high definition. And they have selected XABC at 600 megabits per second. And there you see the data rates and the specifications. The file format is MXF or P1A. Uh, the format is 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. And, uh, and there are a number of vendors for doing color grading and editing. On the left side of the booth, you're gonna see a complete program workflow from acquisition, grading, editing, and final playout utilizing uh, XABC at 4K. Also, uh, uh, Discovery Communications uh, here in the US uh, have uh, agreed, they have accepted 600 megabit XABC as a master deliverable for their documentaries that they receive from many uh, production companies. Now, in the area of program production for broadcasting, there is an organization based in the UK called the Digital Production Partnership, DPP. DPP was founded originally by the BBC, the uh, Sky, uh, British Sky, uh, Channel 4, and the problem was the following. Uh, until recently, all of the major broadcasters were exchanging content using HDCAM SR. That was a master in format for contribution. But tape is going away, and they wanted to uh, 
create a new workflow environment using file exchange, file based. Then uh, they created this organization. They invited many uh, production companies, manufacturers, to participate in the discussions. And uh, uh, we have created a workflow. This is Sony's implementations of that workflow, where we have cameras and acquisitions. We have ingest transcoding, studio decks, uh, editing, and final playout. Okay. In each one of these operations, there is a file format stipulated by the DPP. And the codec of choice is intra-frame compression, because they wanted to facilitate editing in the studio. Long up is OK for the cameras in the field. But for the studio operation, they selected intra-picture compression. And the algorithm, you, you guess right, is a H.264 intra-frame compression at 100 megabits per second for 1080 interlace. They are not interested in 50p or 60p. It's 1080 50i at 100 megabits. 4 to 2 and 10 bits. It's a, it's a codec, well established. Uh, it has been around for a number of years. It has been standardized by SEMTI, by EBU, by the uh, Advanced Media Workflow Association. And there are many companies that can now exchange that file format. Okay? They no notice that in Ninjas, we, ha we have AS10. In editing, we have AES 11 for distribution. And these are all standards established by the Advanced Media Workflow Association. Well, our XABC cameras and studio decks fully comply to that specification. This is intra-picture compression. OK, uh, well, that's one way of looking at data rates, but there are, there's another way. Mostly are Nordic countries, Finland, Denmark, Norway, uh, France, uh, uh, most of the European countries. Some of them have not completely transitioned to HD. Why? Well, because uh, they th think that PAL, widescreen PAL with six to five line is good enough for transmission. That they will only invest heavily to do into HD if they could go 1080-50p. But 1080-50p is expensive if you do it intra-frame. Then Sony developed Longop. This is XABC operating in Longop at 50 megabits per second. Therefore, they can reuse their existing pipelines. They will not increase their storage cost. But now they're doing 1080-50p. In our country, in our area, it's 1080, 60p. 4 to 2, 10 bits at 50 megabits per second. A lot of savings. You, you have to do a little bit more of computation when you're doing editing because it's long up, but it's perfectly doable now. Uh, all of these data rates, the operating points are now fully established. It's easy to read. It's, a, it's something that you can get from SEMTI, the Society of Motion Pictures and Television Engineers. It's the Registered Disclosure Document, uh, or RDD32. There you'll see all of the specifications of, of this file format. All right. With, uh, I want to introduce you to another uh, derivative of XABC. It's called XABC-S. Now that the, this chip has been well adopted in the high-level professional application, we have decided to bring it into consumer applications. In the consumer world, it's called XABC-S. It will not be 422. It will be 420. It will not be 10 bits. It will be 8 bits. Because in the consumer world, you don't have the requirements that we have in professional applications. The file format is not MXF, it's MP4, which is more uh, friendlier to consumer applications. Then these are the specifications uh, of XABC-S all the way to ultra high definition, from a, a standard definition, HD, all the way to ultra high definition. Okay? Our Bravia TV sets have an XABC decoder built in. 
our little consumer camcorders, our action cams, everything that we make today have in the consumer world has an XAVCS chipset. Then uh, this is an, a, a workflow for a, an environment of prosumer or business and industrial applications. We can capture in location, we do nonlinear editing using the professional XABC. And once your program is finished, digital signage or for distributions to, to uh, museums and convention centers, we distribute using XABCS. And a set of boxes, public players, a Bravia TV set, all of them have built in decoders based on XABCS. And even for wedding cinematographers, for family operations, now we can do everything in XABCS. There are simple software applications for doing editing in your laptop. Okay. We have, actually I have to correct this slide, we have 73 partners that have signed agreements and they are reusing uh, our chips or in software versions of the algorithm, they can decompress, they can encode, they can operate in HD, they can operate in 4K. And you can know, you, you can easily see some heavy weights in the editing and nonlinear uh, editing environment. Now, uh, we are now focusing on the second phase of deployment, which is to facilitate play out. You do all of your editing, your programming, your mastering, and then you have that file, which is an XAVC file, and you're gonna put it into your play out server for playing out. Then to, uh, to help all the manufacturers, we are uh, introducing accelerator cards. These are XAVC video cards. The one on the top can do one 4K signal at 60p, or four 1080 60Ps simultaneously. The card in the bottom is a daughter card that a manufacturer could use in a motherboard uh, inside their product, inside their playout server. That will handle a single channel of 1080 60p, either in MPEG or in XABC. And uh, uh, as I said, the first phase of deployment, we concentrated on nonlinear editing companies and companies working with cinematographic material. That all those companies, that uh, effort is now completed. We are now focusing more on the play out. And you notice the key players in the, in the play out environment, Harmonic, Imagine, uh, Grass Valley, EBS, etc. Uh, as here at the show, there are a number of announcements by, by other companies in their support of XABC, uh, either by software or plugins in intraform or interpicture. Therefore, in the 4K area, uh, there has been announcement that Avid with Media Composer now supports long op in HD. Uh, Edius can do uh, export and import in, in, in XABC at 4K and HD. For broadcasting operations, you have uh, both intra and long op import and export by a number of companies. Therefore, the industry is picking up very rapidly the adoption of XABC because they recognize it's a very strong, very powerful codec. Well, just to, to conclude, uh, I hope I, I have been able to uh, convey to you that this is a very powerful compression system, very efficient compression system that Sony is employing all the way from consumer equipment for display devices, tablets, is now embedded in our displays, consumer display sets, and also for television production and cinematographic productions. Uh, essentially, we have covered all of the levels of requirements uh, by the different sectors in the industry, from consumer to cinematographic, and it's a unique compression algorithm. We hope to be able to reuse it for many years uh, until we encounter new applications in the future that XABC will have some problems. Then when get, we get there, we will create something new. But this is our new workhorse for uh, production applications. Uh, thank you very much.